you. And also, thank you for reassuring that our paper indeed will be published by small. <laughs> <laughs> well, for the next uh, 25, 30 minutes, maybe a uh, few minutes longer, uh, I will be uh, sharing with you uh, some of the developments that uh, uh, we have been uh, focusing on uh, within our uh, university at the University of Missouri. And this area, uh, which uh, basically dwells around nanotechnology, and now we are uh, bringing a new focus to the field uh, by interfacing this uh, emerging area of nanotechnology with uh, green principles. And uh, in my opinion, as shared by uh, several of my colleagues uh, within uh, the United States, Europe, and, and Asia, that we have to build this uh, bridge as, as powerfully as possible. Uh, that's one way we can uh, be accountable for uh, the environmental uh, damage of the, of the environmental saving that we all uh, should be looking at. So uh, with that, uh, what I would like to do is give you a quick uh, history about our department itself. Um, University of Missouri uh, doesn't ring a bell with uh, most of you. Uh, it's not uh, one of the Ivy League schools. Uh, we recognize that as much as all of you. But uh, we are very unique in terms of uh, our ability to take uh, discoveries from the laboratory to the product lines for human use. We are probably the only state-funded university in the US, perhaps the only state-funded university in the world who have not only developed, who have not, not only discovered, but we have taken the discoveries to product lines. And I will share a few of the products that are used globally, including in all the hospitals near uh, your area, and in Weinheim or in Heidelberg or in Munich or, or in Frankfurt. So in the, in the late 80s, uh, early 90s, there were lots of clinical demand for the development of a, a brain imaging agent. There was no such thing to image brain in those days. Uh, you know, understanding the functions of brain, understanding uh, the early uh, you know, types of tumors in the brain uh, is extremely important, was extremely important, and it continues to be a, a very important uh, medical modality, medical field. And uh, we, from the Department of Radiology uh, at the University of Missouri, came up with the first uh, technetium-based imaging agent. So again, just to remind all of you, this did not come from the Ivy League schools. It came from us. And it was, it was uh, in fact, uh, lots of the American companies did not believe that uh, we had something as substantial as this. And it was, uh, American companies were unwilling to license our product. And uh, Amersham from U the UK, came forward to, uh, you know, license this product. And indeed, uh, this product, uh, you know, became the blockbuster product for Amersham. Then with uh, ATKVP X-ray, it should be here somewhere, uh, with, a, with an X-ray energy of about 80 KVP, but you can go up in X-ray energy to something like 180 or 240 KVP. By doing so, you can actually begin to use those nanoparticles for therapy because the excess X-ray energy is selectively absorbed by the tumor, and that energy is given out only the, to the tumor region. That energy doesn't go anywhere away, because the X-ray energy is absorbed only by the metallic content. And in this case, the metallic content are the nanoparticles within the tumor. So again, an example, one injection can do both imaging and therapy. There is no such thing so far in a traditional pharmaceuticals. Well, more examples here. Uh, these images look almost like uh, as though we have injected uh, radio-labeled uh, drugs. We have not injected any radio-labeled drugs here. Pre-injected, you don't see. Uh, this is the breast tumor we have created in a mice. You can see you don't see any tumor morphology. Uh, six hours post-injection, you'll begin to see some tumor morphology. And the tumor morphology or, or the image keeps uh, getting clearer with time because the nanoparticles within the blood, they keep circulating every time they hit the tumor, they're taken up by the tumor, and the tumor concentration or the uh, nanoparticle concentration in the tumor keeps increasing over a period of 24 to 48 hours. So at the end of 20, 
forwards, you can see clear uh, pictures of the tumor. Again, an example that all this takes, by the way, is a one centimeter cube tumor. It takes less than 70 micrograms, 70 micrograms of nanoparticles to visualize this. Okay, in sharp contrast, currently available iodinated agents, it would take not only significantly more, but you would not be able to visualize the tumor with the iodinated agents. So if you ask me a question, are there X-ray contrast agents to visualize the tumor so far? There is none actually. Iodinated agents in the first place, they don't go to the tumor. Okay, so it's, it's, a, it's an area worthy of development. It's an area that can uh, find tremendous uh, applications and benefits uh, to the patient community. Uh, you know, one other example uh, is a, a pre, you know, pre-injected, you don't see the uh, tumor morphology. Post-injected, you can clearly see the tumor morphology at the end of 24 hours that uh, you know, the tumor morphology is still intact. Yeah, uh, I'll uh, switch gears. Can I take another 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes? Okay. Um, now I would like to show you, with the same metal, we are switching from a non-radioactive analog to a radioactive analog. Uh, we can do this within our campus because we have the reactor, nuclear reactor that produces medically used isotopes. And there are two forms. I thank all of you uh, for your attention and also for this opportunity.